learning how to install vertical siding isn't much different from the preparations used with horizontal siding. In fact, there are only two differences to keep in mind. If you're siding over a substrate which does not have nail holding strength, you must install horizontal nailing strips every 16 inches. Then, apply a substrate material to the nailing strips. Again, we recommend using material that is no more than one inch thick. Second, leave more room for expansion at the bottom of the panel. A good rule of thumb is one-third up, two-thirds down. For example, if it's below 40 degrees, you have to allow three-eighths of an inch at each end for the panel to expand for a total of three-quarters of an inch. Using the one-third, two-thirds rule, you leave a quarter of an inch for expansion at the top and a half inch at the bottom. Now, what about the accessory installation techniques for this unique application? Begin by installing the corner posts. Then, mark a baseline one inch above the lowest point of the wall. Instead of installing a starter strip, install J-channel at the bottom of the wall. When installing J-channel, leave a quarter of an inch gap at the corner post to allow for expansion and contraction. The next step is to install J-channel along the top of the wall under the eave. If you're going to install soffit, now is a good time to install the soffit receiving channels if you've not already done so. This will save you time later on. Next, install J-channel at doors, windows, and gable ends. In this case, our window has a built-in receiver, so J-channel isn't necessary. When working on a wall that requires more than one course of vertical siding, you have to install back-to-back J-channel for the upper course. After installing J-channel over the lower course, bend coil stock to form flashing and install it over the J-channel. Of course, vinyl drip cap can also be used for the same purpose. Finally, nail a J-channel for the upper panels above the flashing. Correctly installed vertical siding should have a balanced appearance. That means if you were to draw a line down the center of the wall, you'd have an equal number of panels to the right and to the left. This usually means using partial panels at both ends of the wall. For example, if a wall requires five full panels plus a nine inch partial panel, rip cut two four and a half inch panels, one for each end of the wall. Okay, let's start putting up our panels. Begin the installation process by cutting the first of the partial panels you'll need. Be sure to measure your cut line from the nail hem edge. After cutting the panel, create tabs every six inches along the cut edge. Before installing a partial panel, you have to add support to make up for the lock in the channel that was cut off. To create this support, Insert furring of the appropriate thickness into the outside corner posts and nail it to the substrate. Then insert a length of utility trim into the corner post and nail it to the furring. Finally, slide the cut edge of the panel into the utility trim. Be sure the panel engages the snap locks. Use a level to make sure the panel is plumb. Then nail every 16 inches starting from the top and working down. That may be every 12 inches, depending on your local building code. Position the first nail at the top of the first nailing slot. Put the remaining nails in the center of the nail slots. After the partial panel is nailed, install the full panels, locking them and nailing every 12 or 16 inches, as the case may be. Use the standard three-step procedure when fitting panels around windows. Mark, add an allowance for expansion, and cut. Then, insert the panel into the J-channels. To install vertical siding into a gable end, you have to work from one end of the wall to the other. Start by centering a full panel under the gable peak. Mark the position of the panel on the wall. Then, measure from the edge of the panel to the wall corner. If your measurements show you need a partial panel, Cut it and install it at the corner post. Then work across the wall. 